Hello, hello. Happy Monday, everyone. I hope you're off to a great start this week. I hope you know I, I believe in you and that I think you're a good person and that I'm grateful that you decided to put this on today. I really am. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? I'm here and you're over there and we're talking to each other right now. That's nuts. But anyway, I hope you're having a great week. I hope you come see me on tour. Go support the Patreon that makes this possible, patreon.com slash WHGS. Sign up for my text alerts so that you get a text and know that I'm coming to town to perform. But before you do all that, actually do that. Okay, now that you're back. Now that you've done that, what an episode we have today. One of my personal favorites, Anna Lee, a founder at Lioness Health. They make vibrators that collect data, not in a creepy way, for you so that you can understand your sexuality better. We had her on an episode a year ago, one of my favorites. She's back this week with this amazing story about her first sex party ever, and it is so gay, and it is so good, and I love her so much. So definitely stick around for this is going to be a good one. This is one of my favorite favorites we've recorded in a while. The first orgy that I've ever done was with all women um, at a all women's festival. And so it just felt so much kinder and like just gentle. I don't know. It was like just a lot more fun. It was like 20, 30 of us in a tent. They wanted us all to kind of feel intimately connected before like anything happens. So all of us had to go around in a circle. So this took hours. We all cried before. It was like a whole thing. Are you serious? <laughs> yeah. Anna's so much gayer than both we are myself so, and We're Ash. not gay at like, all. Like so much gayer. We're not. We're straight. Can I show you what I'm putting the mic on? A lioness box? That's what I'm guessing. No, it's a hand job machine. <laughs> <laughs> hand job machine I is what they used that. to call me in middle school. No, never. <laughs> but maybe maybe Bree or Anna, maybe you guys were the hand job machines, but I certainly wasn't. I was a blow job machine, but not a hand you, job oh, machine. Oh my god. Were you actually <laughs> were you actually a blow job machine, Bree? I used to in 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 uh back oh. in the day. I I, I will say it. I'm very good at it. <laughs> I'm, I'm exceptional. Dude, I tell everyone I'm bad at it, so I don't have to do it. I'm a <laughs> Word on the street is, listeners, let everyone know, Anna Lee, horrible at blowjobs. Yeah, I only like to receive. Bri, did you give like a lot of blowjobs? How many men have you slept? I have no idea of your personal. Oh, so Anna, you're coming. We're in the apartment. We're having gay sex. We're having gay sex with fan favorite scientist yay very smart smart about sex genius lady the <laughs> one of the founders of lioness sex toys and the app that measures your orgasm data i have one anna lee everybody but yay. now very quickly Ooh. i need to know brie's sexual history because <laughs> brie is sort of interim co-hosting and brie and i have an our best friends but we've never met in person <laughs> oh internet yes. besties well while brie was in prison i was writing to her and we <laughs> we fell in love Ooh, i'm a, i'm like I, I was like i'm so tired today i'm gonna be a wreck but actually i think the mania that i'm feeling is helping with my riffs yeah manic energy helps me with creativity for sure <laughs> oh my god wait how did you two meet on like bumble bff or something <laughs> wouldn't that be so cute that would be the best um no everyone just kept recommending brie to do the podcast and then brie did the podcast and i was like that was one of our best guests ever she's Aww. so funny and then i was like she has to come back and i because i'm because we have such good rapport i've invited her for like every major milestone like my breakup <laughs> episode and like my first you're having gay sex episode on the on the patreon so brie is basically here every time i cry so we've <laughs> oh my god yeah we've trauma bonded so yes. now we're and brie has told me almost nothing it's really a one-sided relationship <laughs> I like this. It's really more trauma dumping from Ash to me, <laughs> but I know my place. I'm here yes. for it. Um, and I don't want to, obviously, amazing guest. Everyone loved you. I can't believe you're not a creative oh. or a comedian um, and so knowledgeable. But I must know about Breeze, blowjobs, BBJs. Let's go to 
the BBJ and scoop. how are you making them so good? I want to know <laughs> the clickbait okay, on that. So I feel like now um, I identify as a lesbian for those that don't know. But back in the day, you know, if I was, you guys aren't watching the video of Bree's tight yeah. little bun, <laughs> Bree does identify as a lesbian. <laughs> the surefire sign. <laughs> type on. Um, and you know, I was dabbling. I, I still hadn't come out to myself. I was like figuring things out. And I think at that point I did not know the difference between whether or not my body was like broken and what I, and whether or not like I could actually achieve pleasure. And if it was just due to the partners that I was with or my lack of ability to communicate what I needed. Um, I think a lot of folks go through that. And I just remember never really enjoying sex with my male partners. Um, um, I should say partners. Did you call them male so- partners while you were in high school? <laughs> because no. that would have been the first indication that you were fucking gay as fuck. <laughs> yeah, I know. Bringing a boyfriend so- home, being like, mom, this is my bi- my male no partner, Billy J. I met him at soccer. Like, <laughs> your male partner. Okay, go on. Oh. Uh- and so I feel like my way of this is this makes it sound dark, but it's not at all because I actually quite en- I actually quite enjoyed g- giving blowjobs. But my way of like getting out of the experience of anything being done to me was just like, oh, like I'll just give a killer blowjob and then we'll be <laughs> done with it. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> it's just so crazy but yeah so I guess like the top energy was a thing from the start yeah for real you're so gay that you love giving blowjobs to avoid like literally ha- like having to like be you know in like in next level intimate although that's insanely intimate but it's a way of putting up a barrier it's so straight that it's gay right it's exactly. so straight that it's gay somehow yeah um I, lo- I love that I've never I've only kissed a boy I've never that's yeah it was really gross um (laughs) Anna thank you for being here I guess we should introduce ourselves and Brie I have such a well actually you know who we are I want to ask Anna a question because I'm sort of I gotta be honest I'm sort of stalling I don't have a great story today I don't really Uh know what I'm gonna say I'm gonna go I'm gonna go off what the vibe is but I said okay. to Bree, you well, were we here- kicked it off with blowjobs. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Really, yeah. you can just go into anything. Um, and my mic is on top of a hand job machine. It's it's all good. It's <laughs> yes. Fine. So where'd you get the hand job machine? Are you guys making uh, hand job machines now? You know that I can't have you on if you're making <laughs> hand job machines. Listen, <laughs> I don't know anything. Okay, uh, I will say I recently realized someone was asking me something about like men, like penises and things like that. And like usually, I have such good answers for like vaginas and vulvas and clitorises like because that's like what we study i realize i don't know anything about people with penises at all and then i was like am i a fraud and then like i'm a certified sex educator and i was like oh my god like so anyways but um so we got i this didn't realize machine. that that's amazing certified sex that's educator so i had no idea yes we got it recently i mostly did it because um tiktok keeps banning me and i thought that if i was a sex educator they would ban me less oh. It's not the case at all. No. (laughs) You know, Beijing absolutely loves certified (laughs) sex educators. I know. Maybe if I talked about hand jobs and blow jobs, they would like it more. (laughs) Um, But anyway, the hand job machine. Yeah. So they they sent us one. um, We're trying to make this like API API like thing where if you're using the Linus vibrator and you're like, you know, like thrusting it in you. It can do that exact same movement on the handjob machine, so you can like sync it together <gasps> long distance. But that is so cool. Yeah, they really sent me cool. All these like sleeves, and I was like, I don't know what to do with these, but look how like who designs these sleeves? And you think it feels good? <laughs> what to design the them? Heck, yeah. Like I don't know. Did you did you get that Ash? That's the inside. That's no, the I, inside I got it. of the machine. I'd love to what? shove my hand in there. It's. <laughs> I just buy in. I buy a hand job machine and one of your lionesses. <laughs> we sync them up so that I can give it to a, a girl and then I can I can have her fuck my hand long distance. That's so sad. That's so lonely. <laughs> hey, don't yuck my yum. Yeah. Okay, I'm so sorry. Maybe I yeah exactly. Maybe I'm a sex educator. Maybe I want my hand fucked from long distance. 
I think the end <laughs> by the end of this podcast, I'm gonna get my certification revoked. <laughs> <laughs> You're always working on such cool stuff. I wanted to know where the tech was at since the last time we spoke. Mm. Okay, um, so and this is not sponsored. I said this a million times it's last time. Not sponsored. Time. Not yes. sponsored. Listener, organic. Just that good. Um. So since then, we've been working on a live view, so like people can use it. Uh, so if you're like using it in real time, you can actually see on your phone like how you're like squeezing and relaxing. So we're actually like I've been working. I've been talking to a couple like Look play parties. <laughs> That's so cool. Yeah, because they want like, you know, like it's cool for couples and like, you know, people that are you can remote control it on your phone and stuff like that. But I, someone I talked to that like the, runs a play party in L.A. and he was like, what if we create a room? And we project it onto a screen and people can be like using it and then you could see it in real time. And I was like, can I come? I was like, that sounds so fun. So I'm hoping that works out, but we'll see. Cool. Okay, um, if something like that works out, there's um, a play party here in Vancouver that I need to, that's queer predominant. And I need to set y'all up because I just know the queers would lose their mind for the combo of hot sex and tech. Yeah, I was about to say, nothing makes sex better than data. Yeah, um, it's really sexy. I'm just turned on by those numbers. And if you know me, you know that I possibly might be turned on by the numbers. If yeah. I was trying to get, like, if there were a way to gamify it where I was, like, trying to get a high score, I would definitely be addicted win? to your... Yeah, I, I and win. What? I'd go for the, the world record, I think. <laughs> Um, that's actually a really fun idea like how many I don't know Anna you you could probably tell me better like what would be the winning thing in that game like how many squeezes like, I know I don't know, I don't know like, what the what the game we have a game like I built this game like a couple like like a year ago and you like squeeze how hard you think a vagina squeezes during an orgasm and I would say like most people don't get it right on their first try. And for some reason, like women especially, or like people with vaginas, like they squeeze it super hard. And I'm like, dude, like it's actually lighter than what people think. And I would love to see Ashley on your first try if you can get it. I, I would I would never think to squeeze hard. I, I don't know, maybe I'm weak, but my vagina like could <laughs> never like No, I don't I, I... <laughs> I don't think I could hold like an object or crack a nut or anything like that. But you need to just start doing some pelvic floor exercises. Probably, but I, you know when I was talking about fucking my hand earlier, I can't really give a good handshake with my vagina. That's what I'm trying to say. I would never be able yeah. to make the merger happen or acquire the company based on that firm vaginal handshake if that makes sense. Mm. I'm I'm weak. I think I um I did like a whole study on like how strong a vagina squeezes and it measures to like you know like a skinny Cheeto so not like one of those like thick ones but like yeah like, kind of skinnier you could break that <gasps> that's, the, like, average. that's the average and maybe like squeeze like squish a blueberry <laughs> how how on earth do we give birth we can barely snap know. a Cheeto and we have humans come out of us that is that's crazy. I think it's impressive that it could squeeze a blueberry. I mean, for you, Ash, it's more of like maybe like a nectarine. But for most of us, <laughs> it's a blueberry. That is like a tight squeeze. A nectarine. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Ash just says there's no firm grip. There's no firm grip. I tried to put a grapefruit in there last week, but it wouldn't. It wouldn't. It wouldn't stay. It just kept falling out. <laughs> Don't even ask me about the bowling ball. But. <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> this is an unhinged episode. I like this one. Should, yeah. should we introduce ourselves? Okay. We've been talking about our vaginas and how loose they are for twenty yeah. minutes. <laughs> Everyone's um, so turned on on this on this episode. Wait, I will yeah. say, <laughs> I will say though, I think the reason I don't really do think about Kegels or like how strong my vagina. I don't have sex with with men. I just never or penises. I never think about. I don't care. Like I'm totally free of that portion of the male gaze, like the tight vagina. Like I That is so true because I feel like when especially like if you're with a person with a vagina and they're wearing a strap, you're not thinking about like how tight you're like tensing on that strap because you're aware that they don't have that potential sensation. Right. Whereas I feel like in 
heteronormative spaces and relationship structures like even speaking to a lot of my friends they're like consciously like squeezing yeah while mm. they're and unsqueezing while their partner is inside of them because they know to a certain extent they can like feel that and that's like part of it Ooh, but technically i like i always tell this to people like you're not supposed to be doing kegels unless you've been told by a doctor or like pelvic floor therapist so oh, all those, like magazines, yeah, well, all those magazines <gasps> that are like, oh, you should be squeezing. And there's a lot of like TikToks on it. It's actually yeah. can do more harm because you're not doing like the full. Most people are not doing the full range of motion. So you're just hurting yourself by making it tighter. So I actually oh like do not do so it unless you need I'm to. I'm actually quite healthy is what we're trying yes. to say. I'm really yes. the model that everyone should be striving for in terms of. Nectarine vibes. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> the next time a woman goes down to me, I'm gonna be like, "What, what would you say? Nectarine like, which vibes? Fruit, which fruit would you think?" Right. <laughs> um, well, this is great. I, we're off to a great start. I love, I love having Anna here. I, you should come back more. And Brie, always a joy. We're in the apartment. We're having gay sex. I am Ashley Gavin, cis gay white woman. She her pronouns. Big tour. Huge, huge tour. The biggest tour. <laughs> We have to bring it back. Well, we're, he might go to jail. I have to, you know what I mean? Like, I got to do it while fingers it's still crossed. relevant. Yeah, fingers crossed. <laughs> <laughs> no one's done more jail time than I have. I've done so much jail time. Um, I, uh, yeah, go, go, I don't know. Patreon tour help. Guys, I'm, can you tell? Look at, look at, look at my face, listener, if you're watching on YouTube. If you're not watching on YouTube, listen to my voice. I'm tired. Please, just go get on my text list. Subscribe to the Patreon. It's crazy. It's fucking nuts. Help. Okay. <laughs> and then I got a Brie. Do you want a musical introduction or do you want the rhyme? Because they're both fire. They're both really good. Oh my gosh. How do I choose? I think the rhyme for sure. Okay. All right. And as always, the canceler chancellor, because I don't know how Canada works. <laughs> We've got the cooter from Vancouver, Brianne oh, that's Williamson. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's my favorite one yet. Thank you. Thank you for being here to keep me from getting can canceled. I'll try my best. It's kind of hard. I mean, oh yeah, there's a lot going on over here, but I'm trying my best, folks. I'm Brianne <laughs> Williamson. I'm a lesbian from Vancouver, Canada. My pronouns are she, her, and you can find me everywhere at Brianne Williamson. Yeah, go follow Brie. <laughs> And then, Anna, do you mind introducing yourself to everybody? Because a lot of people probably know you from last year, but maybe they do not, and maybe they don't have a clear picture of what you do and all your special talents. Mm, okay, I'm Anna. I'm a co-founder of Linus. We make smart vibrators that give you orgasm data. Uh, uh, my background's in engineering. I'm she, her. I'm exploring, I would say, like, pansexual. You were not pansexual the last time we chatted. <gasps> I have so many How things. How exciting. <laughs> a lot of things happening in my life. <laughs> oh my gosh, this is so exciting. Um, but yeah, so I think very much, yeah, I think I'm more just exploratory phase and having fun and, you know, like I've been like the world of play parties and stuff have happened and all that. So it's been, I've been having a good time. <laughs> That's awesome. Awesome. I've never been to one. I've never had group sex and it just feels like so stupid that I haven't done that. <laughs> Maybe this episode's we're having group sex. I would oh. see. I would like that, but I also there think go. there. I think there's also a part of me that would get scared. Oh yeah, and like maybe sad if I didn't. I was gonna hit this. I've got the soundboard here. I don't know if you can hear that. That's me sad at a threesome for feeling ignored. Um, <laughs> wow. I don't know if you'll be invited back, but <laughs> no, it's always worth the try. The no one time. likes Charlie Brown references at the sex party. I've tried. <laughs> can you hear um, the ringtone? Oh. No, it's a soundboard. Oh, Linus vibrators. Ash walks in like, hey, mind if I put my playlist on? It's just like Charlie <laughs> yeah, Brown. Yeah, Charlie Brown. <laughs> um, She's like standing in the corner. <laughs> just Sam, crying. Sam's <laughs> crying. Silent tears in the corner. Um, <laughs> no one's dry humping me. <laughs> <laughs> I actually would be sad if no one was dry humping me. If no one's dry humping me during sex, what am I doing? Why am I there? <laughs> Listener, dry hump me. No, don't do that. I'm not soliciting dry humping from. Dr oh my god, humping. Humping. You panicked. You panicked. You're like, this is bad. I shouldn't solicit it. You panic in your voice. Humping. Oh my god. No okay. humping. 
here's um all right here <laughs> oh no <laughs> i'm i'm gonna try and and something happened to me yesterday so i'm gonna talk about it it's not exciting and I, p- part of the art of being a comedian and a storyteller is to take something mildly interesting and make it very interesting so here we go i'm having a time I just got back from Provincetown, which is like a gay destination, and I had never been. Um, it, it was very, it was cute. Like, it was, I've, I've been around New England. I spent a lot of time in New England, so I'd like seen towns like this before. Have either of you mm-hmm. been to Provincetown? No. No. <laughs> now, no shade to our listeners who absolutely love P-Town. I, I see you. You are valid. It was just a little cis male gay heavy mm. for me and, and where okay whereabouts is this located that's a great question like is so east coast west yes, coast it's, what's it's, going on i'm not even sure if it's technically an island it, it's got to be an island there's oh. a outside of boston there's a cape called okay. cape cod and there, there's a bunch yeah. of islands and little towns there it's there okay mm. so i was it's like a place people go like yes often. and it's <laughs> it's so gay and and i are like actually mm. no one's ever been there i was the first <laughs> one i can't believe ever people are rolling over like they're at home right now screaming being like i love provincetown gay destination like it's like a huge gay destination oh, huge. Wow. they have like a okay weird. so are the people rolling over also queer women i like you know or is it i don't know it was it was also not a great analogy because it implies that they're dead. I was going to say rolling over in their graves, but I then stopped mm. myself because the manic energy went down the wrong joke line, the wrong little alleyway. <laughs> and I, I was not OK. Look, it's a manic episode It's a manic episode. OK, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's just what it is. And I was now I wasn't in the best mood because I was actually there. My friend's partner passed away a while ago and he was having his ashes spread in the water at p-town so it was not exactly a sexy sexy time so you started this story by saying you you hate p-town no 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 went into how your friend's ashes were spread there no no i love p-town and i love that's where i love and i love that's that that's where his ashes are and okay oh i don't do well canceled everyone's like dming me the historical significance of p-town <laughs> my best friend who's a gay guy and mm-hmm. he's into daddy bears and they have like a big bear week there and he that's where right. he's he met and you know that part of it was lovely and heartbreaking um yeah. but it was you know it was great to see where they met but i did feel like oh i'm like one of four lesbians here and i did feel it in a way that i hadn't felt it in a long time and i was reminded that lesbians and other types of queer people don't really have spaces the way that obviously straight people do and then gay men tend to have more of, you know? A hundred percent. Like, I feel like any person going to any town could Google search, where do the gays go? And the top, like, 20 searches are going to be cis, gay, men dominant. Yeah. Um, so it's it's like a deeper dive to find where queer women and other LGBTQ plus folks are. Yeah, it was super cool to like see all these gay couples and have it be so normal because it was the majority of people were gay. That was super cool. And I'm not throwing shade at our gay male listeners like I love you guys go to P-Town. You're going to have a great time. But I yeah. definitely was like. It was interesting to reflect on as a lesbian because I'm so used to being in straight spaces that I never really think Mm -hmm. about it. And then I was in this very gay male space and I felt like, wow, there are a lot of gay men here. It was just like overall like a very interesting experience, you know? Yeah. And here's the thing. There was a there was a dinner, a special dinner where all of this guy's friends um I maybe bleep his name Alex when I say it before. I don't know how my friend feels about this, but we were doing a celebration of life. And behind the bar was a very attractive lady. Mm. Oh. <laughs> I don't know where she was from, but she had an accent. And there was one woman in the room. There was actually Honestly, her. she's like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in love. Honestly, you could probably show me a picture of her today and I'd be like, who is that? Like, because I. <laughs> 
I literally am around too many men for 24 hours. I'm like, I got to find a woman to fuck. It's like in high school when there's one other lesbian and you're like, well, I love you. Like, yeah. it is what it is. We're getting married. <laughs> yeah. Exact. That's exactly what this was. That was, ah, yeah. oh, Brie, that was such good. Co- that was really good. That's what, good game, <laughs> Brie. That was a very good game that you set up in the, imp- that's what we would call it in the improv space. Um, oh, wow. So I go up there. I see the only other woman I've seen in four days. And I instantly am like, oh my God, she's so attractive. And she did touch me on the arm as she went by me. <laughs> to be fair, it was a crowded space, but can I just, she touched me here. She touched me here on the elbow and not on my shoulder. And someone recently said to me, elbow, sexier than shoulder. And then I did kind of an experiment with a bunch of people and we all kind of agreed that the elbow, a little sexier than a shoulder. What do you guys think? But is it like a hold or like a... like? No, a, she did like, not hold my elbow. If she held my elbow... <laughs> she just cradled your elbow. I would have absolutely elbow. orgasmed on the spot if she had cradled my elbow. <laughs> well, I was going to be like, that's very kind of sensual. If you're like passing someone, you can kind of like cradle their little elbow. I'm like, excuse I'll me. Keep, like, that's I'll keep that in mind for the next time that I see this woman. I'll, my uh, question is, is, was it a conscious non-shoulder direct to the elbow... I, I Pat or don't not. No, I don't know. And then for the rest of the night, I'm trying to figure out. I'm giving her lingering eye contact, which is step one, right? Like <laughs> Ash is sending the gay men to go walk beside her <laughs> to see if if she goes for the shoulder or the elbow. <laughs> <laughs> like, just do me a favor. Just walk by her and just see wh- where does she pat? <laughs> this this server, I'm going to need you to stand in her way as much as possible and make her night extremely difficult. Okay? We need Ash to needs see. the data. What well, percentage of times has she touched the elbow? That's so funny yeah. because I, I did ask my friend if she had tapped him on the arm. And he said, <laughs> yo, I'm so stupid. I am the dumbest person on the planet. I'm dumb. I'm a dummy. Wait, so is that how you flirt? It's just you just stare until they stare at you back? Potentially? Well, I was just I was trying to give her gay eyes. I was just trying to give her like, hey, cl- not that I need to. I'm wearing a backwards baseball cap at a celebration of life. So I'm clearly very gay. But yeah, I'm trying to give her gay eyes. And then I'm trying to make conversation. I'm like, oh, do, do you know which of these is vegetarian? Like that kind of thing. I'm talking mm. to her. <laughs> Yeah, hot. Really hot. Yeah, really sexy. We went from the elbow to the vegetarian sandwiches. Like, shit is turning up. Holy cow. We should have warned the listeners, this one's X-rated, baby. I told you, I didn't have much of a story. And right now, Brie, you are fucking killing it, okay? Anna, coming in clutch with the elbow cradle, really trying to make something out of nothing here, which was what I was trying to do in P-Town. I had nothing, nothing to work with. Gay men everywhere. Okay. <laughs> so then I was like, she, there were cannolis at the end of the night. And I fuck with a cannoli, if you don't know me. Yeah. I, I've never said that publicly, but I, I fuck with a cannoli. <laughs> I love a cannoli. She's going to be vulnerable here and finally <laughs> admit how much she loves fucking cannolis, potentially. <laughs> I'm very stressed that, right now. This is the that, beginning of her gay sex story. She dry humped a cannoli. I'm so sweaty right now. Cannolis, roughly the same size as a Cheeto, by the way. So it is. I was gonna say very flaky. You don't want to put them in there. They will. They will break. It'll crumble. Um, there's also probably like a cream filling joke to be made here. Also, I think naming the hand job machine the cannoli. There's so much to be done. But <laughs> the point is, I fuck with a cannoli, and there was one cannoli left on the tray. And she went and grabbed the tray, and she brought it back to the bar where I was hanging out. And I saw her. No, there were two cannolis left because she picked one up and ate one. And I went over and I was like, oh, can I have the last cannoli? And she was like, oh, yeah, sure. I was like, unless you were going to have the last cannoli. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> By the way, these are mini cannolis. These aren't like big, fat, thick cannolis. These are <laughs> these are lesbian-sized cannolis. Yeah, I was going to say. These are the pocket rockets of cannolis, okay? <laughs> these are the questions that I had and I needed answered. What size were the cannolis? <laughs> well, because I had... <laughs> She 
she's had like four jumbo cannolis mind if I have the last one and I'm literally saying to this girl don't get the wrong impression by the way I'm inhaling these cannolis I actually suck down these cannolis because I'm gay and not straight um but Oh, that was an excellent callback. I really loved what I just did there. I don't feel that I got the appreciation I deserve. Listener, write in. <laughs> Tell me Sorry, that that incredible. was the greatest joke. Thank you. I'm busy wiping my tears away, picturing <laughs> you making excuses to go up to the cannoli tray again to talk to the server. Is this how is this how you flirt though? Do you have better <laughs> stories? Like I do. Come oh, on, Anna. Anna. Come on. I love I, Anna. My podcast is successful. This is a successful oh. gay sex podcast. It's not all cannoli content. Okay. Ash's <laughs> flirting is just getting in the way enough times. Just inconveniencing <laughs> yes, with questions and standing in the wrong place. <laughs> I am hurt. Oh. oh my God. Okay. <laughs> okay. 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 Oh, yeah. Bree, I never want you to leave. I want you to move to New York and co-host this podcast with me. <laughs> you can't do it virtually? We could. People like to see people in the room, though. Um, I don't know. I don't know. We can do Maybe. a week trip where, I, where we just uh, interview every person in New York. <laughs> um, <laughs> but anyway, so then I ask her if she's... I, and I'm funny. I'm funny. If there's, I might not have game, but I'm funny. Okay? And I do have game, yes. but maybe not today. All right. So... <laughs> I go, I, I'm like, unless you're going to eat the last cannoli. And I made her laugh. And then I was like, oh, yeah, like more cannoli riffs. So I don't even remember what I said, but I just, I'm going on about. Oh, and then I, I was like, we can share the cannoli. <laughs> I asked if we could split the cannoli. And, and then she just laughed and walked away. So <laughs> I. <laughs> oh, my God. Look, it's honesty. This is an honest podcast. And the honest no, this truth is, amazing. is that I. Did not get this girl. I I was unable to get any lingering. I I mean, she gave me nothing. Here's the thing: she might be straight. I don't know anything about her. Like I don't even know her name. So that's. I did eat the last cannoli, and in that way, I did end up having a very fulfilling night. Mm. Mm-hmm. That's beautiful. Mm-hmm. Yes. Wow. Followed by enormous <laughs> yeah. grief. Um, but <laughs> play the Charlie say. Brown noise. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Oh my gosh. We're going to pour oh. the cannoli filling out for my friend. Um, <sighs> love you. Sorry that I. It was a. It's interesting because he passed from COVID a long time ago. So we, there was a memorial on Zoom. And then we did this to spread the ashes. Um, mm. So it was like an interesting vibe because we had all really. Um, you know, obviously to varying degrees, depending on how close you were to him. But, you know, a lot of people had really processed and it was mm-hmm. very much a celebration, you know, in yeah, this really nice. beautiful gay town that meant so much to everybody there, except for me. Uh, <laughs> but I had the cannolis. So um, that's my gay sex room this week. That was a very wow. like an edging story of like, I don't know. I was like getting there. And then like, not getting... I don't know why you thought it would we end well left hanging. when I... <laughs> when I was like this is not a good story (laughs) I mean I pretty much told you guys it was gonna be bad yeah and it was (laughs) 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 thank you so much I will quit my podcast that's this is the finale the cannoli story this is the big epic finale (laughs) Mm mm-hmm Listener, don't forget to support the Patreon, patreon.com slash WHGS. That's how we pay Alex. He is a full-time employee of the podcast. We could not pay him on ads alone. Me also. This is full-time work, so please consider going and donating. And in return for those donations, you get bonus episodes. You get comped tickets when I'm in your city. Um, You get extended, unfiltered, uncut episodes, um, weekly access to my Zoom stream of my show in New York, and lots of other stuff. Patreon.com slash WHGS. Listener, don't miss me when I'm in your city. I'm touring 25 cities this year, and the best way to hear about it is via one text or email a year from me ashleygavin.com you can go sign up and it enters you to win free tickets or even dinner with me anywhere in the u.s as long as you are over 18 and in the continental u.s 
Um, I have an international mailing list too for when I start touring Canada and Europe and Australia and stuff like that. AshleyGavin.com. Anna, did you have gay sex this week? Okay, I did not. But so last week I had met this girl. Like, so we all like a bunch of my friends and I went out. And then he was like, oh, I have two friends. Like, can they come? (laughs) (laughs) And I've learned something about myself is that I like, I think when I talk to cishet men, like I, I, I'm very confident. Like, I don't give a shit about how they feel. Like, whatever. Like, I could be like, like, I'll like flirt with them. Like, whatever. Like, I don't, I don't put that much thought and effort and I feel very confident. I realize when I talk to women, I just like, I don't know. Like, I feel like I know nothing. I don't know anything about the vagina all of a sudden. Like, I know nothing about like, I don't know. Like, (laughs) and so I get very nervous and flustered. And then I'm like, oh, I'm not sure if she's like, like talking or we're just being friendly or like whatever it was going constantly back and forth and then like, we're like <laughs> <laughs> i was gonna say this is gay panic this is, this is gay by this definition is gay. This is gay pan- like, yeah <laughs> yeah, is it, you're, yeah describing, it makes sense. you're describing what every listener has felt many 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 times but particularly those who dated men for a while mm. and then are now newly exploring women or maybe are fully gay you know whatever yeah Mm -hmm. and so and it makes sense because you know every time people are like oh are you gonna make toys for like men or like people with penises and i was like you know i just don't care about men i like i don't care i don't want to build up (laughs) for them (laughs) and i think that's very telling maybe i love that Uh, but then uh, i also love how relatable this is because you're literally a sex expert and you're still having panic yeah, yeah. And, and it's, it's like, like you think of anyone you'd be like I've got it on lock so for everyone listening like this is normal yeah it's totally normal uh, and like it's easy to pick up when guys like I don't know say they like DM you and they're like oh it was like so nice to meet you I'm like oh this guy's probably interesting but like for yeah I was like and then she's like she texted me like later that day and was like hey there's this play party going on next week like do you want to come and yes, I she's fucking like- into you, Anna. What are you talking about? <laughs> are you fucking? She's but literally was- inviting you to have sex with her. You're like, oh, no, I but can't she tell. said, come with me. And so I was like, oh, like, <laughs> what is this? Mean? Anna's like, should I read between the lines here? <laughs> like, what is this? There's something <laughs> she's trying to say. This is the definition of useless lesbian when someone is like, hey. <laughs> Would you like to go to a sex party with me? And the other person's like, ah, I just don't think she's into me. <laughs> but like, how do we know? Because what if she's like, she doesn't know. What if she thinks I'm just super sure that she just wants this to bring crazy. somebody that feels safe? I don't know. Maybe. I don't but know what's I happening. Just don't think that's statistically likely. Is she gay? I don't know. Oh, well, so my, my friend said that she's bi. Okay, I have another question. Is this her first sex party? No. So to me, if it was maybe her first or she was going to start exploring that, then maybe she'd want to go with a friend or potentially someone she spoke to that had gone before. Mm. Like if I were going to a sex party for the first time, I would obviously bring Brienne because (laughs) you just want a podcasting bud there that you can shoot the show. Tell the story later. Yeah, Exactly. exactly. Just a gal pal to attend the, the space with. <laughs> the sex party. <laughs> Just the historian said they were friends. They went to sex parties together all the time. It's exactly. normal. That's what friends do, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I should no. go. She's into it. Like. She's into it. This is the most I've like felt so confused. Like I feel like I'm a very sure person and I'm so like used to talk about like, I don't know, like, you know, sex and all this stuff. And I like... All of a sudden, I was just like, I'm like so nervous. I'm like, what should I wear? Like, I don't know. And I was like, should I go? Like, should I not go? I'm having, I'm, I don't know. I'm, I'm so not wait till your vaginas are projected onto the ceiling, <laughs> then you're really gonna <laughs> <laughs> Bree, Bree, stay, Bree, just stay, just stay, <laughs> stay forever. I love you. I love you. <laughs> I love you too. Oh my uh, God, you're so fucking funny. How is she not a comedian? Anna, she's not a comedian. Uh, Can you guys please uh, go to a play party together and then do a story? And then, oh, and document it. We'll do a, a pre-vlog and a post-vlog and we'll just, we'll discuss. I'm going to wear a scuba suit. You will not get me naked in front of Brie. I'm going to be, <laughs> I'm not even going to, you can show your feet. You're on wiki feet. I'm not doing. I'm gonna wear flippers, <laughs> goggles. Are you on wiki feet? I am. Oh, I love kind of that. my claim to claim to fame around here. Is that I'm on wiki feet. <laughs> People are writing in about it. Um, wow. 
So this hasn't happened yet. No, it's this weekend. <gasps> but I haven't said yes or no. I haven't. Responded. You got to go. You have to go. Obviously, do whatever you're comfortable with. But also, you have to go. I've been going to like a couple play parties. And it's been it's because I think I've been very like, I just want to explore everything that people are into. And like, I want to try it and just like see what like, you know, I don't know. I'm very much in the thing of like, if you haven't tried it, how do you know? And I've definitely tried things mm-hmm. that I'm like, it's not for me. But uh, yeah. that's why but I yeah, so, like all those dicks. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe if I give it one more try (laughs) for a couple of years and then eventually you're like, yes, I figured it out. I do think that's a healthy attitude for trying sexual things like you can try it a little bit or watch it online or you know what I mean? Like there's definitely been things that I've tried a little bit and I'm like, nope, not for me. Um, Yeah. But yeah, yeah. maybe I should spend some time on wiki feet. Maybe that's my next move. My page is ready and available. Five anytime. stars only. Five stars only. We're trying to get press rating up. Um, okay, so you've been to... We haven't really discussed play parties. There's like a couple episodes, but I think you're our first AFAB guest who's talked about play parties on here. So I'm curious uh, like what that experience... Because they're very hetero... I think one of the issues is that there's a lot of gay male and like... Um, more skewed penis stuff, sex parties, and there's very straight sex parties. There's mm-hmm. not a ton of, of lesbian, like queer, AFAB sex parties that I know about. Um, yeah. I don't know. I, and listener, I'm not using this language. Like, I don't, I am not an expert in this. No, right I think in. that Tell was the a, correct word. That was like, good. Yeah, yeah. Okay. No, All right. Yeah. No, um, I, I thought that was very clear. Yeah. Cause I've, I dated a poly girl for a little while and, she kind of said to me, you know, I'm like pretty much a lesbian, but I have sex with men because I, I love being poly and I love going to sex parties and there's just not a lot of availability for me, you know, as, and also in the kink space, some of the kink mm. stuff she was into, there was not a lot of availability for her. So she called herself, I think she called herself homo flexible or hetero flexible. I can't remember which one. She That's so funny. That's yeah. Oh my yeah. Gosh. It was really sweet and definitely opened up my mind. Hetero flexible for the kink. Right. Yeah. Exactly. For the kink. <laughs> so do you mind talking about some of those spaces a little bit? Yeah. I mean, I think the ones that I've been to, I think mainly because I'm in the like the sex tech space. So a lot, I've been just meeting people that are like, oh, I like go to this one. Like, do you want to come? You want to check it out? Like, obviously, you don't have to do anything you're not comfortable with. And they give you, like, a long list of rules beforehand. And, like, consent is key. And it's it's very, it feels very, like, even the first one I went to, it felt very protecting because I was like, okay, like, these are all good people that probably know exactly, like, I mean, I obviously, I think there's, like, also new people who are, like, you know, don't know properly. But every, every one that I've been to has been really nice. But there are times that I've gone and I'm, like, the only Asian girl like what like woman oh. there and oh, then no. there's like this whole like uh like you could just feel the eyes and just like i think like i don't know i don't know if it's like internal but it's like this fetishization and then you're like i'm kind of oh. scared yeah. and yeah it is a lot of like straight cishet men and so a lot of times i'm like it's kind of scary like it's a little scary in that sense because i'm not super like i'm not really like a one night stand person like i kind of have to feel connected to a person so that whole thing and actually like the first like orgy that I ever done was with all women um, at a all women's festival. And so it just felt so much kinder and like just gentle. I don't know. It was like just a lot more fun and welcoming. And sometimes I think the play parties that a I've been to that knitting. are more like, <laughs> yeah, a lot of knitting, talking, like crying. Actually, we all cried before. It was like a whole. Are thing. you serious? <laughs> Yeah. Anna's so much gayer than both we are myself so, and we're Ash. not gay at like, all. Like so much gayer. We're not. We're straight. I started yeah. this off with blowjobs and you're you're now talking about all women and- orgies and crying in this beautiful experience. I'm like, I'm straight. You might be the gayest person we've had on the podcast. Oh, you're literally a <laughs> vagina scientist. <laughs> That's true. And I know nothing about penises. It's a big deal. And you all cried. What did you guys cry about? What was the what was happening? <laughs> so they like so we were like uh it was like 20 like 20 30 of us in a tent and then um they wanted us all to kind of feel intimately connected before like anything happens so all of us had to go around in a circle so this took hours and it just talk about something 
that we haven't told. Wow. And the prom is so gay. This is so gay. <laughs> this is unbelievably gay. This is so gay. Oh, maybe it says this something is... that my first orgy was this, huh? This is... Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. And, <laughs> and we all had to just talk about like something that a secret that we haven't told anyone, you know, ever. And so everyone went around and people just started just telling really sad stories. Everyone's like crying. Everyone's like holding each other. And then yours other. is, yours is, I'm gay. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm gay and I didn't know. <laughs> and I'm still not sure. And I don't know if this girl likes me or not. Like, it's a whole thing. So. <laughs> um, and then we all like, on the, the, the lady that was like leading us was like, okay, now everyone take off your clothes. And then they actually made us all masturbate. Like no touching other people and then masturbate. <laughs> and you can only like start kind of doing stuff once you, if you can like have an orgasm, like once you orgasm or like whatever, just by touching yourself. And then it was like, okay, like you can ask for like consent, like ask other people to play with you. And then it was this like whole little orgy. It was very cute. I could never do this. I could <laughs> never. Wow. I'm like so proud of you. And so, and I like really admire you. I could never, ever do, I could never do it. Okay, but actually the crying helped because I was super like, how do I leave? And I was like staring at the exit. You know, there's like on the tent, there's like one exit. I'm like staring yeah. at it. Like, where can, when can I dip out? Like maybe when everyone's crying and like hugging each other, I'm going to just leave. Because I started getting nervous because I was like, oh, I don't want to like. Sure. Like I'm not a person that wants to yeah. like share feelings. And, and stuff I'm like sure that you guys, there was consent at every step of this and like opportunities for you to leave. And like you kind of knew what you were getting yourself into. I just don't want mm -hmm. anyone listening to think that. You know, this is like oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. sex parties are very adventurous. This is not for everybody. And I just want to make sure that, every, yeah. you know, yeah. I love that Anna just said that what she was worried about was the sharing your feelings. Oh, yeah. I, to I totally glossed over that. The entire, entire tent full of masturbating women. <laughs> Listen, I'm a Gemini. OK, I like the feelings <laughs> part is not my wheelhouse. Anytime people talk to me about feelings, I'm like, are you a water sign? Like what's happening? <laughs> So, yeah. I love that. So, oh, wait, no, Brie, you're a Sag, right? Sagittarius? I'm a Sagittarius. Mm. Yeah, I'm a Scorpio. Mm -hmm. Oh. Mm -hmm. I know, I'm sorry. Yes. Scary. <laughs> yeah. My sexual dark, energy cannot be resisted, especially energy. when I'm eating a cannoli. Um, <laughs> <laughs> a mini cannoli. Sexy, sexy Scorpio shit over here. Uh, so that's in well, sorry continue we cut you off no that was yeah so um so yeah since then I've gone to play parties I didn't think it is a lot more heterosexual and I think mm -hmm. one thing I've learned about myself is like uh in terms of the like world of like BDSM and kink like I I'm definitely like a submissive like I don't like being dominant in any shape or form really like but I've like mm -hmm. tried like uh, like pegging and like all these different things which has been really fun cool. but it's like what it's like it's I'm glad I tried it but I think I'm definitely like just so much more of a sub but I think for me like because I don't know the people in play parties a lot of times it's like this feeling of like I don't know like is this person like a cool person outside of this space like I don't know I don't know like it's just like this feeling yeah. and I think yeah. sometimes like cishet men kind of bring that feeling of like I don't I'm not sure Versus like, yeah, like, yeah. I don't know, that orgy, like, I think crying really helped in the beginning because it just helped yeah. like, everyone open well, you up. you developed that, that intimacy and you got to hear people, you got to sense their personalities. Like, I've never said this on here, but I don't know if this is the right phrase, but demisexual, like, I, I, I wouldn't identify myself as that, but I definitely, because like, I, I don't know that that's helpful for me. But yeah. I definitely like need to get to know someone's personality now yeah. I, and I can get it quick. You know what I mean? But it's a big part of why I'm attracted to someone. Totally. Um, right. Um, wow. You're like such a, a role model for our listeners who might want to try things. Oh. Yeah, I, I think agree. Trying things is so it's been such a yeah, I'm very much in like a how do you know if you haven't tried it? I mean, obviously, to your extent of like what you're comfortable with and everything. But yeah, for me, I've just been like, I'm like, just so curious. The world's so big. So I'm like really right. curious to try just all sorts of things that people are into. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think you also have like a really magical combination of coming off just very like 
calm and positive in your nature and the way that you speak about sex, but then also sharing these things that I think maybe traditionally would be seen as like raunchy or mm. over the top. Like so fucking it's, a Cheeto. You know, <laughs> <laughs> no, I was more referring to the the tent full of uh, naked women all oh, fucking it. each other. But got yeah, it. Cheetos as well. Um, but I love that. I think it's like bringing a new way to speak about sex is like just a really like powerful thing. And I love hearing you speak about sex because I think it's different to the way that a lot of folks do. Yeah, I hope so. I think like, um, I mean, I've gotten like Uber, like, you know, when you're like Uber driver is like, oh, like, what do you do? I don't know. I'm, I'm in California. Yeah. So I'm a very, like, yeah. I talk to my Uber yeah. drivers, <laughs> talk about life. Yeah. And then, you know, sometimes they're like, oh, what do you do? And I'm like, oh, I make sex toys for a living. And then we start talking about like sex. And like, this is like a, I don't know, like a dude, like a old man. You are like, bold. <laughs> you are bold to yes. do this. And they would just be like talking. I don't know. Like that's been really fun for me. But I, I do like this idea of like the more we talk about it, and the more we can talk about it like normally, like we can be just like very chill and I, like I don't come from a hyper like feeling super sexy and like really knowing my body either. So I like came from like being Korean and very scary parents and scared of my own body till my mid 20s so I'm very like now I'm like mm-hmm. oh I just want to explore everything and I'm always like so what are you into like tell me what kind of kinks you have like what are things that you always want to try but never tried and I don't know I like learning about that stuff. I think that's, that's probably so why like a lot of times when you're when you're kept from something you know what I mean yeah you have totally. this interesting perspective on on how to bring yourself to it um yes. that was beautiful Brie can we go to you did you have gay sex this week? I did. I'm going to mirror what you said a bit. Cause I, my gay sex this week was very, very vanilla with my partner. It was very quick and by choice. And it was just like a nice like... Not in a tent. <laughs> not in a tent. There was no crying before. There was no sharing of stories. It was like a fun quickie. Yeah. But it got me thinking that in an interesting way, I feel like I was so sexually adventurous when I was younger and when when I had more time like I don't know if I'm giving myself enough time to continue to like explore and have fun with sex because it's boring to say but I'm so busy that now I see sex as like a scheduled in thing yeah if that makes sense and so like I feel like in a weird way just being a little vulnerable here I feel like I'm like losing my like my like I consider myself a very sexual being but I said that out loud to someone the other day and I'm like am I still because I don't know if I'm like Mm. nurturing that part of myself Mm. in the last like six months because I've been so just like exhausted and I feel like I like even little things like I used to always be out like you know online or whatever looking for like different toys or things to try or like curious or like let's give this a go and now I literally think I only do that like I've spoken about on this podcast before on vacations and I'm realizing I think it's just because I have time the days <laughs> you have free yeah. time yeah and otherwise I'm like I have time for a vanilla quickie and that's about it and that makes me kind of sad I feel like I need to like factor in more time for my sexual health and experiences. We needed to give you some assignments for the podcast. I I, I think we do. Brie, you better yeah. do food next week, and I demand that it be a cannoli. How many more <laughs> cannoli jokes can I? They're done. <laughs> the listeners are done. They're like unsubscribed. Done. No more. <laughs> oh my gosh, we're okay. I'm gonna pitch to my girlfriend this scene of she's the server of the cannolis, mm. <laughs> and then being like, "Where would you touch me if I walk by you?" exactly would you go for the shoulder or the elbow role play me and this woman whose name i do not know where she's from i do not know (laughs) i just know that she was the only woman i saw in p-town the last girl in (laughs) p-town it'll start the scene will start with that and it'll end with me getting no sex at all just eating like five cannolis (laughs) in the corner of the room yes totally it's it's very satisfying on a different level you know (laughs) <laughs> if you have a sweet tooth, it's very satisfying. Bree, that was inc- first of all, that was incredibly vulnerable. Thank you for saying that. I definitely have been there. I've gone like, yeah. It, I don't talk about it too much because I have always wow, some vulnerability for me. 
<laughs> I have always been the the like slut on the podcast. Right. You know what I mean? So I mm -hmm. I am always thinking about my stories and what I'm going to bring and, you know, being authentic too. But I've definitely had some like dry spells that the stories have lasted me through. You know what I mean? And yeah, I definitely more recently had a, like a like a rebound of my confidence level and wanting to get myself out there and have more sex with more people. But it comes in waves for me. And I do think yeah. you have to nur you have to nurture if you want it, you have to nurture that part of you. And it's just like anything else. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like sex is such an ebb and flow. Like it it doesn't mean you're less sexual of a creature or like not. It's it's definitely mm -hmm. like I am the same thing of like I feel the need to masturbate because it's part of my job. And I like if I feel oh. guilty if I don't for like say a month and then so for example, when I was doing the TikToks a lot and like posting my orgasm data and then not having content. Oh, and I was kind so of like, interesting. like, shit, like this is my job. Like how, like, why do I not feel like masturbating? Like all these things. And I would feel guilty. But then also like sex drive is something that comes and goes. And, you know, there's if mm -hmm. there's life factors happening, you feel less so like whatever. And, and then like America was going to shits. And then I was like, I just like, I just yeah. don't feel sexy at all. And just. All sorts of feelings. Mm -hmm. So I feel like that's normal. And but I always say like vanilla sex is good. Like people, yeah. Are like, yeah. Like that's a good, that's a good, nice, like sweet sex, you know? Have you had a lot of eye contact, Brie? Oh, I love eye contact. Me and too. it's true. It's true. Mm. I love that we should definitely mention that, that I'm definitely not saying it's a bad thing. Like I, I had great sex this week. Like I love vanilla sex. I love in a way like with a partner when you both know like kind of like the exact like easy is the wrong, wrong word but like the exact way you both like it and you just do it and it's great and you're like okay that was fun now we can like watch our tv show that we wanted to get to the greatest hits you play the greatest hits yeah yeah <laughs> but i also think that like because sometimes you get to know your partner so well and you know what works then and what you both like then you kind of start just like defaulting on that mm. and i feel like i've got to like challenge myself to like steer out of that more often yeah it feels like you sense. have a little bit of a inclination to to try things and now at this point i think we should violate some boundaries listener write in <laughs> let brie know what she should do next in the bedroom how can brie spice it up because you know i don't know is canadian food does it have a lot of flavor i don't know what? let's, bring, let's what? bring some spice to this situation what that was like a oh. really bad white people joke not really fully <laughs> conceived it, it was just another bad joke on from me today the lesbians no, yeah. are rolling over they might not be dead but they're rolling over from that joke i think you should do a poll on what type of food i should incorporate mm. yeah let's do that for sure mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i'm i'm gonna go with poutine Wow, I'm surprised you say cannoli. Of course. No, right, I should have gone with cannoli. What the fuck is wrong with me? Specifically, min mini, mini cannolis. What the kind of comedian am I that I missed that? That was fucked up. <laughs> you thought of poutine? Yeah. <laughs> well, I went with a Canadian. Yeah, yeah. Maple syrup, poutine, yeah. just like a whole Canadian special. Ketchup chips just crunching over top of her body. <laughs> ketchup chips? Ketchup chips? Have you never had ketchup chips? They're a Canadian no. thing. Okay, no, if we ever film together in person, I'm going to bring all the Canadian food items and you can try them. And wow. I will bring the American food items. <laughs> Can't wait. <laughs> oh, God. I need to go to bed. <sighs> well, shall we do butt plugs? Plug. I, I'm assuming you're done, Brie. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That was, that was it. Super vulnerable. Thank you for sharing that. And I definitely want the interaction from the, from the audience. Uh, um, <laughs> Anna. Where can people find you? Because I'm obviously falling asleep right now. And <laughs> it's been a long day. Uh, so my Instagram is Anna is average. My TikTok is Anna the average. And our company, everything is Linus Health, like a female lion. And it's cool. a great, great company, you know, women in STEM. Um, it's, it's, you know, such a cool concept because there's so little science devoted to vaginas and vulvas. And there needs to be yeah. more. And thank you so much for doing it and, and oh, continuing so to nice. come back and 
and share the findings. Share the I findings totally in the agree. Data. Yeah, it was so interesting listening to. I, I I'm I can't wait to go look at all of your content because Ooh. you're so interesting. Oh, thank yeah, you. That's so cool. nice. <laughs> yeah. Bree, anything you want to plug? Yeah, you can find me pretty much anywhere at Brianne Williamson. I have a podcast. I can explain podcast um, and everywhere where podcasts you are listened to. <laughs> and that's, we are all, that's about we, it. Anywhere podcasts you are listened to. Anywhere <laughs> listening happens to podcasts, I can explain podcasts. <laughs> Brianne Williamson is on Wikifeet, five stars only. Thank Yay. you. <laughs> Listener, if you please, patreon.com slash WHS. We're expanding the team. We're expanding our offerings. I could really use it right now. <laughs> <laughs> so here's a cool little drop. We're building a studio. I'm getting a, not, you know, th- this is my living room. M- people don't know. My bed is literally three feet over there. So I'm moving. <laughs> you can just roll right into it. I literally can. And, I, and I'm so excited <laughs> to have a... <laughs> <laughs> like there was some vulnerability and then your girlfriend just like fucking books it across this Ugh. i always tell her too i'm like you can just you can just walk by at a regular pace you know <laughs> that was a very fast forward to she's like maybe if i move quick enough no one will notice <laughs> <laughs> anyone listening you have to go watch the youtube just the last five seconds that was so funny <laughs> but patreon.com slash whgs and check out my tour dates sign up for my text alert i will literally text you when i'm in your city oh and anna you came to the weirdest show of all time you came to such a weird fucking show yeah but it was still it was fun good i had a great time good i'm so glad um i did not love that show at all a I traumatic I- thing happened to me a traumatic thing happened to me at that show. I saw you afterwards. And you, the, and you were very sad. I was oh so my gosh. upset. Okay, here's what happened. I'll just say it very briefly, and then we're going to go. These two queers in the front row, like halfway into the show, stood up and walked out. And I was like, why are you guys leaving? And they were like, we have a party. Because it was Pride weekend. They had double booked me. And they decided that they were going to the party and not staying for the comedy show. Just They're lie. Like, That's enough laughs. Just Thank lie you. to me. Just lie. They were like directly in front of you too. <laughs> front row. Lie. Also, if you think you might have to leave early, take Don't a seat in the, the back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Maybe that was the lie. Maybe they didn't have other tickets. <laughs> have you thought about that? <laughs> <laughs> <Sorry. Yeah. laughs> Thank you for listening, everyone. I'm ending my career. I'm going to go eat a bunch of cannolis. Yeah. Um, thank you so much. Go check mm. these guys out because they are the best. <laughs> Thanks for listening, guys. Thank you so much. Uh, this podcast is possible because of the patrons. Patreon.com slash WHGS. It really helps. Go check it out. And then today, I kind of want to hear from you. Write in, listener. What are your gay thoughts? I usually do this on our Discord where we have this amazing queer community set up. Go check it out. It's in, if you go to any of my social media, it's in my bio link. It's a great support system. I'm learning a ton there. But why don't, why don't you shoot me a DM? I'm opening up. I've been a little not as responsive. I'm going to open up the DMs. What are some gay thoughts you think I should cover in the coming weeks? Let me know. I love hearing from you. You're the best. Have a great week, guys. <laughs>